talk about solving indeterminate systems. Now an indeterminate system is where the row echelon form of the augmented matrix AB has one or more rows of all zero elements. So if you're not sure what we mean by the augmented matrix and row echelon form, uh, see the video on Gaussian elimination. So here we have an example. So this is in row echelon form. So I have pivots of A11 and A22. So the pivot is a first non-zero element in a row. Um, and we also have a row of all zeros here. Now if we were to try and solve um, this uh, linear system using back substitution, we wouldn't know what the uh, value of x3 would be because we've got no way of knowing because it's just all zeros in the bottom. So this means it's an indeterminate system. We can't calculate a unique single solution to the system. It has an infinitely many solutions. Now the rank of a matrix is the number of non-zero rows when it's reduced to row echelon form. So the rank of the um, augmented matrix here is 2, um, which is less than the number of variables in the system, which is 3. So you, we know we've got an indeterminate system because the rank of the augmented matrix is less than the number of equations in the system. Now since we cannot solve for all the um, variables, um, we say we have a free variable. So here x3, because we don't know what it is, we say it's a free variable. And what we do is we set it equal to some parameter and exp express the solutions for the other variables in terms of that parameter. So I'll show you an example. So here we have a system of linear equations and I'm going to solve this using Gaussian elimination. So we form the augmented matrix. We use row, uh, elementary row operations to reduce to row echelon form. So if you're not sure wh what I did here, I suggest you go and have a look at that video on Gaussian elimination. Okay, so here's the row echelon form of the augmented matrix and you can see we have a, a row of all zeros. So this is an indeterminate system and has an infinite number of solutions. Now the, th the third row are all zeros, so we know that x3 is a free variable. So I'm going to let x3 be equal to r. Now r is just a parameter, it's nothing special. Um, common, it's common to use rst as, um, as parameters. Okay, so if x3 is equal to r, if we solve the second row, so here we have minus x2 plus 3 times x3, well of course we're letting x3 be r, so it's 3r, and that's equal to minus 2. So if we rearrange to make x2 the subject, you can see that x2 is equal to 2 plus 3r. Do similar for the first equation. So here we have x1 minus um, x2. Well, we know that x2 is 2 plus 3r, so that's what we've got here, plus 2 times x3. Well, we know that x3 is r, and that equals, th equals to 3. So once again, we rearrange to make x1 the subject and therefore the solution for x1 is 5 plus r. So our general solution is x3 equals r, x2 equals 2 plus 3r, and x1 equals 5 plus r. Now if you wanted to obtain any um, solution to this, you just set r equal some number. So for example, if r is equal to 1, then we know that uh, 5 plus 1 is equal to x1, so x1 is equal to 6. For x2, we've got 2 plus 3, which is 5. And for x3, we, of course, let r equal 1, so x3 is equal to 1. So this is one such solution to that linear system. By having r equals another number, we get another system, uh, another solution to that linear system.